Hi all, Law1 Gaming here, back from a long break with another video. First off, a quick sorry for being away for so long. I don't really have a good excuse for being away either. I just kind of wander off from time to time and get distracted and blah blah blah. Anyway, today I wanted to make a new video talking about something near and dear to me, and something I've been thinking about a lot. Dungeons and Dragons. I recently got back into it and I'm going to GM a game for some new players next weekend, which has got me really excited but also a little bit nervous. I'm excited because it's more D&D, and I missed playing it, and I get to show my players a whole new world of adventure. But I'm nervous because I want to give my adventurers a good experience, since some of them are first-timers, and because of schedules and life and stuff, this might be the only time some of them ever play. In fact, it was a bit of a miracle to even get them all together for this one time. But. That being the case, I've been thinking back to my first D&D adventure, which I'd like to share with you guys now. Story time! So let me take you back, back in time, to a magical era of 2010-ish or something. I was but a whippersnapper who had only heard legends of this D&D. But one day, a friend invited me to play with a group, and having no excuse not to, I said, sure. They were playing 3.5, I think and I made a pretty generic dual-wheeled fighter character with two attack hamsters, Dizzy and Adolf. And no, they were not dire hamsters, just regular hamsters. But this is important. It'll come up again later. Anywho, we had a big group of like seven to eight players and one GM, and it was quite frankly too much for the GM to handle, let alone me. So as far as I remember, we didn't really do much with like a story or role-playing, and my character just sort of showed up and started to follow the party through the mountains. No idea why, just did. We were attacked by giants or something, and that's when I found out combat in D&D sucked. Maybe it's just the group I was with, but I remember it taking forever for us to get through that encounter. But we got through it and continued trekking through the mountains until we eventually came to a rope bridge with a bunch of griffins, I think, or hippogriffs. One of the two, maybe. Visibility was low due to a snowstorm picking up as we got there, and danger was afoot. So, like idiots, we started to cross the bridge and hope for the best. Suddenly, a giant sky manta ray-like thing burst through the clouds and ate a griffin, or hippogriff. We rolled initiative. Now, here's where I realized one of the major flaws of my character, and in fact, much of the party. Most of us had little to no ranged attacks. So, some people shot arrows, some stood around, and I just sort of shook my fist angrily. But then, the manta ray made a huge mistake. It flew under the bridge we were crossing. As you might have guessed, I had my next lesson in D&D which was learning about fall damage. So, I landed on the Sky Manta, and note, no one followed me. And then I proceeded to stab it many times, sort of like that dude in ReZero with the Sky Whale fight. Eventually, the mana died and we started to drift downward at roughly the speed of gravity. Now, I actually wasn't technically alone on the Manta, as our cleric had summoned a spider, and it too was on the Manta. So, me and this giant spider start falling into the abyss below, and the cleric goes, Oh, I can cast flight on a target within range. I forget the range exactly, but at that point, both I and the spider were still in range. Mind you, on the next turn, we would fall out of range. So, who does our cleric save? The spider that will literally disappear in two more rounds, or the player? Yeah. He saved the spider. And that was the end of my first adventure. I'm sure there's a lesson there, but I think that's enough for now. So, I'll see you next time. 